When somebody asks you to balance a chemical equation, they are simply asking you to determine the number of each type of molecule that is necessary for the reaction to take place. When we are balancing a chemical equation, we do this by changing the coefficients in front of each molecular formula until we get to a point where we have exactly the same number of each type of atom on both the left side and the right side of the chemical equation. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through five examples of how to balance a chemical equation. Before I jump into this, I wanna say that some students are able to balance chemical equations intuitively, meaning that they could just look at an equation like this, this is an unbalanced equation, and they can just very quickly determine what the coefficients need to be for this equation to be balanced. That's not the case for every single student. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is walking you through a step-by-step -step process that you can take where you can balance an equation correctly 100% of the time. And if you're one of those people that can balance equations intuitively, this video is probably gonna feel really slow paced to you. Before we get started on this process, I wanna let you know when we're balancing a chemical equation, we are only going to be allowed to change the coefficients in front of a molecular formula. We can never change the subscripts within a molecular formula. So once we get this written out, I'll tell you what I mean by this. So when we're trying to balance a chemical equation, we can change these numbers in front of a molecule. We can, you know, have as many of these different molecules as we would like, because this number here just tells us the quantity of H2O. When we're balancing a chemical equation, we cannot touch the subscripts within a molecular formula. Like we can't change this to a three or change this to a six. That's never allowed. And let me give you an analogy of why that can't be done. So let's say here's a recipe for making a peanut butter and jam sandwich. And if we wanted to balance this, maybe we would say that we need two pieces of bread in order to make one sandwich. Maybe you need four quantities of jam, whatever that might be. So this, what we're doing here, adding these numbers in pink, this is balancing the equation. We're coming up with how much bread, jam, and peanut butter is necessary to make a sandwich. This is the process of changing the coefficients. Changing a subscript in a molecular formula is like turning this into something entirely different. So to change a subscript inside our peanut butter and jam recipe would be kind of like doing something like this. Changing entirely what we're working with. So if we were to change a subscript, no longer are we even talking about bread anymore. Maybe now we're talking about tacos. And we know that tacos plus jam plus peanut butter doesn't really equal a sandwich. So keep that in mind as we're balancing this equation. Never touch the subscripts, only touch the coefficients. Now, if you're not one that balances chemical equations intuitively, like the majority of people, what I want you to do is start by making a list on the left side and the right side of all of the different atoms that are present in all of the reactant molecules. So we have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, and we're just going to make a list. And we're going to do the same on the right side. And what I want to do is line them up so that they're in the same order. So even though on the right hand side it goes carbon and then oxygen and hydrogen, I want the atoms to be in the same order on both sides. And I'm going to start by figuring out how many of each one of these types of atoms I have on the left and also on the right. So I can see all together on the left hand side I've got a total of just two carbon atoms and I have six hydrogen atoms and I have one oxygen atom plus two more oxygen atoms, which is a total of three. Now we'll do the same over here on the right-hand side. We have one carbon atom, we have two hydrogen atoms, and between the two molecules, we have a total of three different oxygens. This equation is balanced when the number of carbons is equal 
and the number of hydrogens is equal and the number of oxygens is equal. So we can see, because these numbers are not identical, that the equation is not balanced. So what we're gonna do now is just start modifying coefficients in an effort to get these numbers the same on both the left and the right side. And I like to start at the top and work my way down. So I can see I have two carbons on the left-hand side of the arrow, but I only have one carbon on the right. And the way that I go about changing the number of carbons on the right is to just change the, sub, or the coefficient in front of the CO2 molecule. So I'm not allowed to just squeeze a little two down there. That's like turning bread into a taco, but I can change the number of CO2 molecules that I have. That's like saying one bread versus two breads. So when I put this two in front of the CO2 molecule, that changes the number of carbon atoms to two, two molecules and each molecule has one. It also changes the number of oxygen atoms as well. So now we have two molecules with two oxygen atoms each, that's a total of four, plus this one over here. So now we have five oxygen atoms. Our carbons are balanced, so now let's move down to our hydrogens. We have six hydrogen on the left and two on the right. We need more hydrogen over here on this side. Ideally, we want to have a total of six hydrogen. So looking at the H2O molecule, I can see if I change the coefficient to a three, that's gonna give me a total of six oxygen. Now doing that also changes, again, the number of oxygen. On the right-hand side, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven oxygen on the right. So our carbons are balanced, our hydrogens are balanced, and now all we need to deal with is the oxygen. We need four more oxygen atoms over on the left-hand side. Oxygen is present in two different molecules on the left-hand side. We wanna change the coefficient of smartly. If we were to change the coefficient of C2H6O, that would also change the amount of carbon and hydrogen on the left and it wouldn't be balanced anymore. So what we want to do is change the coefficient of our O2 molecule uh, so that we only change the amount of oxygen without unbalancing our carbon and hydrogen. And what we need for this O2 molecule is going to be a coefficient of two. Nope, a coefficient of three. That will give us a total of six plus one, which is seven oxygen atoms. And this equation is balanced. I've got four more examples. We'll move a little bit faster for the rest of them. So first start by making a list of all of the atoms that you have on the left and also on the right, and count up how much of each atom you have to start with. Two nitrogens and two hydrogens on the left and one nitrogen, three hydrogen on the right. We can see that uh, we need to have more nitrogen on the right-hand side, so we're gonna put a coefficient of two in front of NH3. That gives us now a total of two nitrogen atoms and six hydrogen atoms. Our nitrogen is balanced, and now we move on to hydrogen. We need to have more hydrogen on the left-hand side. We need to have exactly six hydrogen on the left-hand side. So this equation is balanced. Next example, we wanna make a list of all of our atoms. We have potassium, we have chlorine, and we have oxygen. We're gonna start with one potassium, one chlorine, and three oxygen on the left, one potassium, one chlorine, and two oxygen on the right. We're starting with our potassiums and chlorines already balanced, so we move down to oxygen. And this one's a little bit tricky. We have three on the left and two on the right. There isn't really a number that we can add that's going to instantly balance this. If you're intuitive, you can probably right now see exactly what needs to be done. But I'm gonna walk you through the process as if you weren't quite sure. If you know that you need more oxygen on the right-hand side, just increase that, that coefficient by one. So we're just gonna change the coefficient for oxygen to a two, and that's gonna leave us with four oxygen atoms on the right-hand side. In doing that, I knew that I wasn't going to balance this, but it brings me closer to balancing. Sometimes balancing means that we have to go back and forth a few times. So uh, my oxygen are still unbalanced, but now I need more oxygen over on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna change that coefficient. Now I have two potassium, I have two chlorine, and I have six oxygen. And my oxygen still aren't balanced. So I'm gonna go back to this side again. And I'm gonna change one more time this coefficient is now going to be a three and I have six oxygen. So like I said, sometimes we go back and forth several times, but the equation is always balanceable. Now in this process, we unbalanced our potassium and chlorine, but we can fix that pretty easily. And there we go. 
Now we've got two more examples. Um, in this one, we're going to start by making a list of our atoms. We have one carbon on the left, we have four hydrogens on the left, and two bromines. And on the right hand side, one carbon, one hydrogen, and five bromine atoms. So let's start with the hydrogen atoms. They're the first ones on our list that are not balanced. We can see that we need a total of four hydrogen atoms on the right-hand side. So we change that coefficient, and we now have four hydrogen atoms, and it looks like we have a total of eight bromines. We have four here, and then another four here. Carbons are balanced, hydrogens are balanced, and we just need more bromines. We specifically need eight bromines on the left-hand side. We can do that with a coefficient of four in front of the Br2. And so here we are at our last example. We've got a lot of atoms in this molecule. We have sodium, we have oxygen, we have hydrogen, and we have sulfur. Sodium, remember we want to keep them in the same order to make it easier to look at. And to start with, we have one sodium on the left, we have five oxygen on the left, three hydrogen, and one sulfur. And on the right-hand side, two sodiums, five oxygen, two hydrogen, and one sulfur. So let's start with the sodium ions. It looks like we need to put a two in front of the NaOH. That gives us two sodium. That's also changed the number of oxygen and hydrogen, so let's recount. We have one, two, plus four is six oxygen atoms on the left, and we have one, two, plus two is four hydrogen atoms. So we move on. Now our next atom to, on the list is the oxygen, and we can see that we need more oxygen over on the right-hand side. We have oxygen present in both of the products of this reaction, so I'm not sure which one I should change the coefficient on. I kind of feel like I should change it on the water because I don't want to mess up the sodium, but I'm not 100% sure. In a situation like this, it's totally okay to just kind of pause on balancing the O2, skip it, and move on to the next element. A lot of times in the process of balancing, some of these elements just work themselves out, or it'll become obvious to us what we need to do. So we're going to skip oxygen for now because we're not quite sure what we should do to balance it and move on down to hydrogen. We've got four on the left and two on the right. So looking over here, I can see that I want to change the coefficient in front of H2O. That's going to give me four hydrogen atoms, and it also changes the amount of oxygen. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six oxygen atoms. So look at that. It actually did work itself out. We didn't have to worry about it at all. And it looks like everything has been balanced as well.